Okay, welcome back. I hope you had fun getting that pie program of yours to work using a critical section. So just to remind you, before when we took our first version of the Pi program, where we promoted some to an array, we had false sharing and that clobbered the performance. So I could fix that by padding the array, but that was really unsatisfactory because it required that I knew the size of my L1 cache line. And that's kind of messy, especially if I move to another machine which has a different cache line size. So that was not a satisfactory solution. So now here is my solution. So I get rid of sum. I'm not going to use it as a, uh, as a scalar that I promote to an array. Instead, I'm going to use it as a local inside the region. So you can see I declare sum inside the region. But pi is still kept as a global outside the region. So now I go through, and now each thread has its own copy of sum. And it's going to go ahead, and now because it's its own scalar, it's on the stack, it's not on the heap, the chances of having false sharing are zilch. So off I go when I'm done, but I still have to get that sum back into my shared value pi in some way. Now it's very important for you to appreciate that at the end of a parallel region, the thread logically goes away. That means anything I put on the stack goes away. So now the fact that I have a variable sum sitting on the stack for each thread, it's going to go away, I'm in trouble, I got to save it into a global. I do that by summing it into pi. Now that's a potential for a race condition, because if I have all the threads with undisciplined access summing pi willy-nilly, I could be halfway through updating one sum when I start updating on the other one, it's messy. So I have to have mutual exclusion of that sum into pi. And so you can see in this code here what I did, that I created my own copy of sum for each thread, and then I have a critical section after the loop where I do the sum into pi. So let's look at the results from my program. So here are the results from before where I did the original pi program, and then I did it with padded. And what you can see here is using the critical section, I get pretty much the same quality of answers, the same performance as I got when I padded the array. But now it's portable. Now it's a clean, portable implementation. I don't have to work into the program the size of an L1 cache line. So as I move to a different machine with different cache architecture, I'm not going to suddenly have a program that went from working with good performance to poor performance. So I've gotten around the problem of false sharing by putting that critical section after the loop. Now a lot of people, when they do this problem, they, they kind of pick up on the fact that they want to get rid of that array, that that array was what got them into trouble. They kind of pick up on the fact that they've got to create some way of the threads creating their own value of the sum and then combining it into the global. So what they'll do is they'll put the critical section inside the loop, like I have on this code. And I just want to warn you, if that's what you did, you're in good company. A lot of people, the first time they play with critical section, they do this. Heck. A few slides back in the previous module, I did something like this in an example I showed you. But notice that you're spending very, very little time computing x, very little time doing that update. And that means I'm putting most of my time inside a critical section. This version of the program, with the critical section inside the loop, we say that it basically serializes the computation. Because pretty much all the threads are doing is doing a computation and waiting for their turn to get into the critical section. So you want to really think hard where you put that critical section. If you put it inside the tight loop, then you serialize everything, your performance will be terrible. You really, really need to put it after the loop, as I did in the solution I showed you. All right, so think where you put critical because it adds a lot of overhead, and that can kill your performance. Now, in this particular case, because I'm just updating a simple, uh, it's a read, modify, write. Read in pi, modify by adding in the sum, and then write it back out. I could also have done this with an atomic, as you can see in this version of the program, which looks exactly like the version with a critical, pretty much. It's just I did it with, a, with an atomic, and that would work just fine as well because it gives me a very lightweight and a very quick uh, way to do the mutual exclusion. And so that completes this look at uh, this version of working with the SPMD pattern to solve the Pi program. We're now going to look at a different way of splitting up the work as we move into parallel loops in, uh, in OpenMP. So that will be the next module.